at the party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. Um, yeah. All right, Ellen. You definitely know about the after parties that Diddy was talking about, because apparently you were also a participant. <laughs> Ellen, were you surprised by the allegations about P. Diddy? Did that surprise you about P. Diddy? He's been on your show many times. Have you been to his parties? Oh, it gets even better, because allegedly the feds have revealed Ellen DeGeneres' name in a Diddy lawsuit, and it's in relation to the illegal transportation of humans, including itty-bitty little humans. Child, the way Wendy Williams would have had a field day with these hot topics these past few weeks? Man, this only makes people miss her even more. Well, Wendy did try to warn us about Diddy. This is nothing but the same broken record that Wendy's been talking about since forever. And she also tried to warn us about Ellen, and maybe we should have paid more attention to her. 18 years, 19 years on TV doesn't change your life. It exposes you for the person that you really are. I mean, both Diddy and Ellen tried to ruin her career because of what she said. And as much as Wendy is not okay at the moment, she's probably somewhere going like, how you doing? Or probably something like, clap back if you are shocked. You know what? Let's just get into breaking down how Diddy and Ellen have been involved with each other and what the feds allegedly know about that relationship. Okay, anyone who watched The Ellen Show knows that over the years, Diddy was a regular on that show. Of course, with the allegations behind his parties surfacing at the moment, fans are looking back at some of his older interviews with Ellen. And one of the old interviews that has caught the attention of many was when Diddy was asking Ellen why she never attended his parties. Yeah, she definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up. To no, well, there. <laughs> is it on the East Coast? Yes. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. Okay, well, may maybe I'll have one at your house. Maybe I'll have one at your house? Was Diddy Loki suggesting that they should host one of the freak-off parties at Ellen's house? Baby, one thing you should take away from the conversation was that Ellen was invited to all the parties. All of them. But the only reason she never went to the parties was because they were too far. Not because she found them questionable. And when Diddy said that the parties that start after midnight are a different kind of party, maybe we should have also taken that part a little more seriously. Thank I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party though. The other thing you should realize is that this particular interview was from a long time ago because there have been claims making rounds that Ellen was spotted at Diddy's parties. In fact, it's been suggested a few times that Ellen may have attended the less publicized gatherings at Diddy's house where disturbing and potentially illegal activities allegedly took place. And when I talk about illegal activities, the one involving Ellen was allegedly the transportation business. So word on the street is that the feds have footage of Ellen with a bunch of little humans in one of Diddy's parties. And your guess is as good as mine as to what they were doing there. Guys, remember when Ellen was caught up in that Wayfair drama about selling furniture at very high prices? Well, now it's beginning to make sense as to why the cabinets were being sold at up to $10,000 and why they had names associated with reported missing persons such as Naraya, Yaritza, Samaya, and Olivia. Allegedly, the cabinets were the ones being used for transportation by the likes of Ellen and Diddy. Honey, when there were allegations that Ellen and people like Oprah Winfrey were on house arrest for illegal transportation, y'all said it was just a conspiracy theory. But given recent updates on Diddy, maybe there was some truth to whatever was going on, and Ellen may have been right in the middle of it all. To a lot of people, it makes sense that Ellen was right in the middle of the Wayfair drama when the company was being accused of acting as a front for illegally transporting humans by selling pricey cabinets named after people. That conversation has come up again, and there's somebody who even said recently that they were looking for a bed frame on Wayfair a few years ago, and they remembered seeing a hideously ugly old school locker, but didn't pay much attention to the name. But the person was stunned that anyone would pay $10,000 for such a thing, because the price was really outrageous. Then not too long after that whole scandal about illegal transports via Wayfair came out, according to that person, shortly after that, a woman came forward and said she worked at Wayfair at one time, and items at higher prices were only handled by certain people in higher positions at Wayfair. Why? Again, your guess is as good as mine. Like I said, Wendy would have a field day with this story, especially considering how she was always a whistleblower, and most of the time people dragged her through the mud for it. Hasn't she always warned us about Diddy? For instance, back when Charlemagne the God was Wendy's radio co-host in 2009, Wendy invited former bad boy rapper Mark Curry on her show to talk about his book, Dancing with the Devil, How Puff Burned the Bad Boys of Hip Hop. The devil in this case was obvious. 
obviously Diddy. And during the interview, Mark said, this Amanda has a shadow of things that follow him and it will rain on you too. So it's really all about the dark cloud. Let's just say that Wendy agreed with everything that Mark said about Diddy. And if you are a Wendy watcher, you know that Wendy has also said some things about Diddy. And not just Diddy, by the way, Wendy was one of the first to call out R. Kelly's relationship with Aaliyah and hinted at Russell Simmons and Bill Cosby's bad behavior behind the scenes. She was also at the forefront calling out rappers who were living a down low lifestyle and the detrimental effects it had on some women. So she knew exactly what she was saying when she was exposing all those people in Hollywood. And specifically, when it comes to Diddy, Wendy said quite a lot. Like when Diddy and Cassie briefly broke up in 2015, Wendy Williams also speculated that there was a balance of power issue between Diddy and Cassie when she said, um, you know, my thing about when you date a mogul is that it's really difficult to avoid them because if you use your head, you never know when they're going to pop up on the scene. Like he's mogul, like he can hire a plane right now, zoom it to South Africa, <laughs> land on the, on the roof of the hotel where she's staying, okay? Pay people off at the front desk, give me the key and let me up in her room. Like I'd be, I'm already paranoid. Apparently, Diddy even tried to get even with Wendy and had her blackballed because of what she was exposing about him. I mean, in her 2004 book, The Wendy Williams Experience, Wendy herself wrote that she had a certain level of contempt for Puff because he single-handedly tried to ruin her career. Okay, before getting fired from Hot 97, Wendy also claimed in 2005 during her radio show, The Wendy Williams Experience, that she was almost jumped by the girl group Total, who was signed to Diddy's record label Bad Boy Records. She recalled the alleged moment and hinted that Diddy was involved during a 2019 episode of her talk show where she said, Once upon a time, there was a music mogul who sent his all-girl group to beat my ass in front of the radio station. <laughs> fact, fact. And I finished my, I finished my air, oh God. Anyway, I finished my shift, wound up my headphones, put my bag in the crook of my arm and see everybody lined up at the window looking down on the sidewalk. And, and, but look, I'm like, why is everybody looking down at the sidewalk? I mean, noses were pressed to the glass. And I get downstairs and find this girl group jump out of a gypsy cab to come after me to kick my ass. And I'm like, for what? You know what I said was true. You all are broken. You were living in the projects. And that was that. In addition, Wendy also suggested that Diddy was behind her firing from radio during a 2013 interview with Vlad TV, when she talked about how her firing revolved around her speculation about a hip hop musician. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time, her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career. And um, it's all coming full circle. And yes, Miss Wendy also had a few things to say about Ellen, who was now under fire for her alleged association with Diddy. In fact, when it was revealed that Ellen DeGeneres' show was not the happy place it portrayed itself to be, Wendy went in and she went hard about how Ellen was being exposed for who she really is. I was a guest. I wasn't happy. Just saying, Norman. Mm -hmm. And people called me out on it before I was able to say anything about it. Like, oh my gosh. Damn, it's really not looking good for either Diddy or Ellen. But you let me know what you think about Ellen being mentioned in Diddy's shenanigans. Do you believe that everything that's being said is true? And what are your thoughts on Wendy basically trying to warn people about Ellen and Diddy? Drop those thoughts in the comments section below.